Next up is our own El Codostra, the author of Nix, with his Nix Flakes talk. Give him a hand, everyone. All right, can you hear me? Good sound. Testing. Testing. All right. All right, so uh, thank you all for coming. Welcome to uh, NixCon. And uh, by the way, let me first give a big shout out to our uh, release managers, uh, Samuel and Linus, and, and everybody else who contributed to a really great release, uh, extremely smooth. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's really incredible to see that, uh, that happening. Um, so uh, yeah, this talk is about Nix Flakes, which is a new, well, experimental feature uh, in Nix. Uh, it actually came out of uh, a, a talk uh, given by uh, Shay Levy at last year's NixCon about require.nix. So that was about uh, yeah, essentially uh, uh, being able to compose um, uh, Nix-based projects and in multiple repositories and making uh, them more discoverable and giving them a standard structure. And uh, yeah, th that, that's something that I really wanted for a long time and uh, uh, yeah, also address a bunch of other big problems that we've had in Nix for years. Um, so uh, yeah, for the last year I've been uh, uh, hacking on that um, um, and uh, so that has actually been funded by uh, Shay's company, uh, Target, uh, so they've been paying uh, my employer, Tweak, uh, to work on that. Um, so let me first talk a bit about all the problems that we're trying to solve here, because there are quite a few. Uh, so very briefly, uh, flakes are a way to package your Nix files. So uh, that might sound a bit strange, because Nix is already a package manager, So, uh, but it's a bit embarrassing. So it's a very nice package manager, but it's not very good at uh, actually packaging its own stuff. So uh, Nix expressions, uh, well, I mean, we've had these things called channels, but other than that, uh, uh, and channels don't work very well. Uh, and, and, but other than that, uh, yeah, uh, it, it's uh, uh, getting your Nix expressions to users uh, or to other developers is, uh, is kind of a mess. Uh, so let, let's go through all these problems. Um, so one, one problem that we've had is uh, if, if you have a, a, a large system spread out across multiple repositories, then uh, it's not convenient to build that with Nix. So for example, at a previous job, we had this big system uh, that was actually, so it was a multi-repo project, so it was had components spread across, I think, dozens of repositories. So just building that system meant you had to uh, more or less manually check out uh, uh, all those repositories, make sure that they're in the right place, maybe set up the Nix path environment variable, uh, because these repositories were all depending on each other through Nix path or uh, just importing each other via dot dot slash. Yeah, so every repository had to be in the right location relative to each other. Uh, and, and that's not a nice developer experience. So basically if you need a readme.md explaining how to build a project, uh, you've already failed. Uh, so for example, if you check out a, uh, a Rust project, you can just do cargo builds and it will always work. Uh, and uh, uh, with a Nix project, uh, <laughs> everything had a different convention and, and everybody developed their own ways of, of doing these things. So uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's not good. So the, the vision here is that uh, any Nix based project should be able to uh, do a git clone and, and run Nix build and, uh, and it should work. Um, so related to that is that um, Nix projects don't really have a standard structure. As are there a few conventions, you might have a shell.nix file or a, a release.nix file for your Hydra jobs, or maybe a, a default.nix, but actually default.nix doesn't actually have a standard structure. It's, it's not defined whether that's one package or a set of packages or arbitrary other stuff. Uh, so for example, all packages.nix in, in Nix packages is some weird mix of packages and, and library functions and, and builders. Um, so uh, 
uh, and then there are things like NICs or as modules, which uh, and where there is really no convention. So if you have a, a project that provides a NICs or as module, uh, there is no convention on on what that thing, what that file should be named like, and 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 how how you should pull it into your own um, system configuration. Uh, so we want to have a standard structure. Uh, just like, say, you have a, a cargo.toml in a Rust project, uh, there should be a standard way, a standard interface uh, to a, uh, a, a nix based project. So another goal is uh, improving reproducibility. So a bit of an, uh, well, another embarrassing thing about Nix is that it, uh, it pioneered reproducible builds, but uh, the evaluation of Nix uh, expressions themselves is, is not all that reproducible, despite the fact that it's a purely functional language. Uh, so the, the, the problem is not so much the purity of the language, but the fact that uh, evaluation is not hermetic. So uh, a Nix expression can pull in arbitrary files from your file system. So for example, it can, uh, uh, something that happens in Nix packages, it, depend, it, it will read in uh, .config slash nix packages slash config dot nix or something like that. Uh, so that means that if two people check out the same repository and do a nix build on that, they might get a different result, uh, which is uh, obviously a bad thing. And uh, there are other sources of uh, contamination like hey, using environment variables uh, or uh, hey, calling fetch git to, to fetch uh, a git repository without specifying a revision, so then it will just fetch the uh, uh, the latest uh, head revision, uh, so yeah, that's that's not uh, reproducible, uh, and that also has uh, uh, implications like y you cannot cache evaluation results uh, persistently. So the goal of Flakes is, uh, so if two people uh, have clone a have or build the same Flake, uh, they will always get the same result. Um, so another goal is. Uh, replacing Nix channel. So Nix channel is th the, the main way that we distribute Nix packages and, and NixOS to, uh, to users, but it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty limited. Uh, so it's, it's hard to actually create a channel. I mean, it's, it's not really that hard. I mean, it's just a tarball containing a, a dump of your repository, but just creating that thing is not something you want to do. You just want to point somebody at a, at a Git repository and, and it should just work. Um, so with Nix channel, you also cannot easily pin a channel to a specific uh, version. Hey, you can only say Nix channel update and they will get the latest channel, but you cannot roll back to a previous version. Um, channels don't really auto update, so that's kind of the opposite of pinning. But uh, So if you don't run Nix channel dash dash updates, then your system doesn't, or, or nothing updates at all. And that, that might not be what you want because you don't get any security fixes or other fixes. Uh, and uh, uh, they're completely self-contained, so uh, channels cannot express dependencies on other channels, which basically means that they're only useful for distributing Nix packages, because Nix packages is the only thing that doesn't depend on other repositories. Uh, most other uh, Nix projects will depend on Nix packages, so that means you can't really use them as a channel. I mean, you can hack things, uh, or you can use the Nix search path, but then you're back to that problem of reproducibility. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, we need to provide something nicer than Nix channels. And then finally, uh, we actually, I mean, that's an extension of replacing Nix channel, but we actually need to finish the Nix CLI. So this this have one uh, command replacement for all the existing Nix tools was actually uh, something I first proposed at the first NixCon in, in Berlin. Uh, and so uh, embarrassingly, we're still not there yet. So uh, uh, so it, it doesn't have replacements for Nix Env, Nix Shell, and Nix Channel. And actually, one major blocker there was that, uh, well, so these commands, so they try to provide a unified interface for, for all these commands. Uh, so with the, the old interface, uh, for example, Nix Env and Nix Build have a completely different user interface. They have a completely different way of uh, referring to packages. So Nix Env uses package names and Nix Build uses attribute names. Um, and uh, yeah. And Nix channel, of course, is completely different. So 
so the goal there was to unify these things, but uh, it was always a blocker that, uh, yeah, I mean, I had in my head that Nick's channel is a mess and, uh, we, and Nick's path is, 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 is a mess, so uh, we need a replacement for that. Uh, so we need to have a good answer to the question of what does Nick's build Nick's packages dot hello mean? So currently it means, well, look up Nick's packages in the search path, uh, so in the Nick's path environment variable, and probably that's populated using the Nick's channel command, so that's where you get your Nick's packages from. But so that has all these previous problems, so we need a better answer to that. So uh, uh, yeah, so Flake provides a, a answer to that. Um, all right, so now let's get to the, to the actual solution. So uh, first, before actually diving into what a flake looks like, let's look at it from a develop, developer point of view. But uh, very briefly, a, a flake is just, uh, well, simply put, it's just a, a Git repository that has a flake.nix file in it. And the flake.nix file uh, describes what that thing describes, like Nix packages or modules or, or overlays or uh, containers, uh, basically a any, any kind of Nix values, uh, but it provides some standardized structure to them. Um, so suppose that we want to run Rust from uh, Nix packages. So uh, yeah, you would say Nix run Nix packages hash Rust C and then dash C Rust C dash version, so you run it. So this is almost exactly the same as what you um, would do in old school Nix. Uh, so the only difference is that the dot has changed into a hash. So you say uh, Nix package is hash Rust C instead of dot Rust C. Uh, but it, it does something completely different. So in the uh, old Nix, this would uh, go through the Nix path and through your Nix channels and look for Nix packages. So here, uh, so Nix packages um, is a identifier that is so-called flake reference. And flake references describe, well, uh, the location of the flake, and that can be a URL, so for example, a GitHub a repository on GitHub, but that's not very user-friendly if you have to type that all the time, so you can type it, but, uh, but usually uh, you go, you use this uh, so-called registry, so there is a global registry that has some mappings from well-known repositories or well-known flakes to, uh, to their actual locations. Uh, so what this command will do is it uh, will fetch the latest registry. I mean, it caches it, so most of the time it won't actually be fetching anything. So it will look for the location of Nix packages, and then it will fetch Nix packages. So unlike Nix channel, you don't have to add anything, you don't have to configure anything. Uh, this just uh, works. Uh, so, all right, so it works, that's great. Um, so these flake references, you can also um, uh, ferry on them. So Nix packages is looked up on the registry, but you, and, and in the default registry, Nix packages is mapped to the master branch or the unstable branch of Nix packages. I might change that in the future because maybe it's not a good idea, but in any case, but suppose we want to use the release 1909 branch, then you just say, Nix run Nix packages slash release 1909, and that will fetch the head revision of uh, 1909, uh, which has an older Rust version. Uh, so these commands, by the way, are not very reproducible because they're referring to uh, head revisions of repositories. Uh, but yeah, so okay, so, had, uh, so there can be any number of flakes. So for example, in the flake world, uh, the patch shelf project uh, has a flake.nix file. So if we want to run the latest and greatest patch shelf, we just say nix run patch shelf and this will fetch the patch shelf repository, uh, build it and, and run it. Um, now, so if we want something more reproducible, we can also use a, a so-called immutable flake reference. So that's one that doesn't refer to a, uh, a to a, to a branch or tag, but to an actual revision. So, uh, and, and ideally, doesn't uh, indirect through the registry because the registry might change. So, I can say something like Nix run GitHub uh, and then an actual project and a revision. And so, uh, this will always provide the same result, of course, uh, provided that this repository uh, doesn't disappear. Um, so, that's something I 
don't have a solution for at the moment yet, but uh, um, all right. Um, yeah, a little, little bit more user perspective. So, um, so the difference with Nick's channel here is that uh, you, 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 you get the latest version of Nick's packages by default, so it might not be what you want. Uh, so you can also pin a, a flake. So what that does actually is, so you have a global registry, but there's also a per user registry. And, and these pin and add commands just register a, a override in your local registry. So Nick's flake pin will add a, an override that makes Nick's packages point to the current revision. And after that, it doesn't change. So you always get the same thing. Uh, or you can say, uh, you can explicitly make Nick's packages point to anything you want. So you can make it point to your own fork or to some branch that you want, whatever. All right. Um, very briefly, I can mention that since a few days ago, there's also a Nix env replacement. So you can now uh, say Nix profile install Nix packages hash hello. And this is a little bit nicer than Nix env because it, uh, it remembers where uh, these things actually came from. So it will store in the, uh, the, the, the profile that uh, this Nix packages hash hello resolved to a particular revision. Um, so yeah, you can always reproduce that thing. You, you always know exactly what, what, what's in your, u in your profile, uh, but you can also upgrade that. And it, it also remembers your original uh, URL that you used to install it. So it will, uh, so if you run upgrades, it will uh, yeah, fetch the latest Nix package and, and rebuild from there. So you, you get a mix between uh, 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 yeah, sort of imperative and declarative style. All right, so that was the user perspective. Now a bit of the developer uh, perspective. So suppose you want to hack on a flake. Um, so there is actually a little convenience command, nix flake clone, which, uh, so this will look up a flake in the registry. Uh, so uh, here in NixOS homepage, uh, that's the nixos.org homepage, is actually built using a flake. Uh, so this just runs a git clone. So we can go into it, we can edit it a bit, and uh, now we can run Nix build. And uh, yeah, so this just works, uh, yeah, which is uh, not entirely trivial because the Nix's homepage actually uh, depends on multiple versions of Nix packages and it pulls in Hydra and, and Nix ops and, and the master of, uh, of Nix because it needs to prettify their manual. So all sorts of silly things going on there. Uh, but uh, yeah, you don't need to know about it. Uh, it it's you just run Nix build and uh, and it works. All right. Um, so Nix build by default it builds uh, this so-called default package that a flake provides. But a flake can provide more than one package, obviously, uh, as in the case of Nix packages. Uh, so for example, in in Nix's homepage there is this packages explorer derivation, and if you want to test that thing. Uh, independently, you would say something like nix build dot hash packages explorer. So dot refers to the current directory and hash packages explorer is the, uh, the attribute in the flag that you're interested in. Uh, yeah, there's also a nix shell replacement. Uh, so it's called nix dev shell. Uh, and that uses, um, well, by, by default, it uses the default package provided by your flag. And if, you, but you can also have a, uh, an explicit, uh, dev shell uh, thing provided by your flake. So if you want to set up a very fancy uh, environment that differs from, from the actual package, then, then you can declaratively uh, specify that. Um, another thing worth mentioning is there is a nix flake check command. So that will check uh, whether everything in your flake evaluates correctly. Um, and, uh, and it will build uh, a special uh, check attribute in your flake. So uh, uh, you can put some smoke tests in there. Um, yeah, so this, this is a nice way to, uh, to verify that your flake is still correct. Uh, yeah, and flakes can provide many things. So for example, they uh, can provide uh, uh, NixOS system configurations. So NixOS container has flake support, so you can say, uh, uh, yeah, run uh, the NixOS homepage flake in a container, and that will build the uh, NixOS configurations dot container 
attribute from the flake. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so that's all completely reproducible. So if two people run this command on the same revision of this repository, they will always get exactly the same container. Uh, yeah, so then we can start it and we can run it. And yeah, that's nice for the home page because all these things like uh, packages.json uh, work uh, because they need some special web, web server configuration. Uh, so yeah, that's nice. All right, so now what actually is a flake? So uh, how am I doing by in time, by the way? All right, I'll assume that's, that's okay. Uh, so okay, so what is a flake? So a flake is actually just a, a little bit of metadata around the Nix expressions that you already have. So your default.nix or your release.nix. Uh, and um, so the metadata is things like a description and an addition. Uh, and the dependencies of the flake, so the other flakes that it depends on, like Nix packages. And then the main thing is the outputs of the flake, so that's, uh, those are the values that it, uh, it actually provides. So here's an example, uh, so this is from a uh, flake called DwarfFS, which is a little uh, fuse file system for fetching dwarf debug info on demand. Uh, so it, uh, it has a description it has an edition field that's mandatory. So the edition currently needs to be 2019.09. And that's actually a, a nice feature because this will allow us to evolve not just flakes themselves, but the uh, Nix syntax and semantics in the future. So if we want to do things like, uh, I know, hey, remove the URL syntax from the Nix language, then the edition field allows that. Um, so uh, at some point we would bump this to uh, 2020 something and then old flakes would still be parsed using the old uh, uh, syntax and, and new flakes using the new one. All right, so the main thing here is the, uh, the outputs. So uh, there are some packages here. Well, there's actually only one package. There's a default package which just aliases that package. And there is a nixos module dot dwarf fs. Um, and this uh, Flake has some dependencies. Well, actually, it has only one dependencies, and these are passed in as function arguments. And those are other flakes. Uh, so there's one called self, which is just this flake itself. So you can refer to the flake's own outputs. So, for example, here we're referring to self.packages, which is actually this thing up here. Uh, and that's uh, sometimes useful for referring to some metadata of the flake. Uh, but the main thing here is Nix packages. Uh, so we're not saying anything here about where we get Nix packages from. You actually can specify that, so it's not shown here, but you can specify an inputs attribute here, which actually specifies where the inputs come from. But if you don't specify that, if you just uh, have a, 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 um, a function argument here, then it will be looked up in the registry. So Nix packages will be looked up in the registry and, and that's what, what is used to, to build this thing. Now that sounds very uh, non-reproducible, but um, uh, so the solution is that there is uh, a log file, just as you uh, know from uh, NPM or, or Cargo. Um, so when you build a flake, so you have a flake.nix, it will uh, look up all these dependencies, and that's extremely impure, but then it will generate a flake.log file, which maps those uh, impure uh, dependencies to um, concrete revisions. So uh, have, for example, uh, Nix packages will be mapped to uh, Nix OS slash Nix packages slash a, a whatever revisions happens to be uh, current at that time. Um, and so, and once the log file exists, it will be used by ev any subsequent build. So if you run Nix build again, uh, it will use that, uh, uh, the, the dependencies locked in the log file. Uh, and so you would generally commit that log file as part of your repository. Um, and uh, yeah, and then things are wonderfully reproducible. So. For example, uh, in Hydra, uh, Hydra is always configuring Hydra job sets has always been uh, unpleasant because you have to specify these job set inputs. Uh, so uh, that can get very messy if you have dozens of repositories that you uh, depend on. 
Uh, but uh, now you no longer need to do any of that. The only thing that you need to configure in Hydra is the, uh, the URL of your flake. And that, that flake will have a log file that completely um, uh, yeah, locks all the dependencies. So uh, uh, that's all Hydra needs to know. Another nice thing about reproducibility is that now uh, um, if you want to, yeah, uh, if something fails in Hydra and you want to try that out yourself, so Hydra has this little known feature where uh, you, you can click somewhere in a, me in a menu on reproduce this build and it, it so uh, f it, what it used to do is uh, generate a shell script that uh, tries to reproduce all the dependencies of your of your project, so uh, it, it will generate all these calls to Git and, and Mercurial to fetch all your dependencies. Uh, and um, yeah, most of the time that, that doesn't really work. Or, uh, uh, but, but yeah, so now that's completely unnecessary because you can just say, uh, you can just cut and paste this one liner. So for example, Nix build, and then the, the so-called immutable flake reference. So, for example, GitHub nix slash nix slash a revision, and then the attribute that this Hydra job corresponds to. So, Hydra jobs dot build dot x eighty six six four Linux, and uh, yeah, that's guaranteed to guaranteed to give you exactly the same thing as what Hydra is building. Uh, I skipped this one. So, uh, yeah, what are the outputs of a flake? Uh, so, a flake can provide anything, uh, but uh, there are a few well known outputs, uh, so if they exist, then Nix Flake check actually uh, requires them to have a certain format. Um, so for example, uh, the packages attribute must be a set of derivations, so if you put uh, uh, other stuff in it, uh, it will complain. Uh, but yeah, so other well-known ones are uh, Nix packages overlays, Nix modules, system configurations, uh, uh, CI jobs like Hydra jobs, uh, uh, dev shell environments, on. But uh, other than that, you, you're completely free to have arbitrary outputs. So have flakes are just a little bit of a wrapper around your Nix expressions. Um, yeah, let me also still mention that so there's some uh, basic flake support in NixOS. That's really nice because, um, yeah, it used to be very annoying in NixOS to, if, if you want to pull in something that's not in the Nix packages repository, uh, there's not a super easy way to do it, but now you can. So for example, uh, here's a NixOS configuration uh, for a Hydra server. So I just say, well, I, I need Hydra as an input. And then in my modules, they say hydra.nixosmodules.hydra, and, and it just works. And um, this, for the first time also, uh, allows us to get rid of things like Hydra in Nix packages. So it was always very embarrassing in Nix that um, if you have a Nix-based project, so something that has a Nix expression or a Nix source module, it was very hard to actually ship that in Nix packages because we had to actually reproduce all that stuff in Nix packages. So Nix packages has an outdated clone of the NixOS module for Hydra. So th that's not a very nice approach. Uh, so now we can just get rid of these things and you can just uh, use uh, the Hydra flake uh, directly uh, or, or, or for that matter the Nix flake. So if you want uh, the bleeding edge of Nix, then these two lines are, are all you need to do. Just pull in the Nix overlay from the Nix flake uh, and, and, and you're ready. Uh, all right, so there is an RFC. Uh, so uh, none of what I described here is actually in uh, Nix master and uh, uh, none of it is, in s is set in stone. So all of this is subject to change or maybe throw, we'll throw it away. We decide it's a bad idea, uh, but hopefully not. Uh, but uh, yeah, so you can play with it. So I'm very interested in feedback uh, and uh, I think that's it. All right, <laughs> questions? Um, so, I'm curious, uh, clamping down on impurities um, seems to remove a, a really important lever for injecting authorization to get private 
stuff? Like, what's the what's the story for that? Um, yeah. So basically, that should just work. So, for example, uh, for GitHub. Uh, so uh, currently, uh, flakes have. Uh, I mean, flakes are uh, fundamentally agnostic as to uh, how flakes are fetched. But currently, they're just uh, 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 Git and GitHub as a as a sort of transport mechanism. Now, so Git just uses whatever con uh, authentication mechanisms you have. So if uh, it, it, it's not executed by the daemon, uh, all that fetching. So it's just run as as your normal user account. So it, uh, it can use your SSH keys or, or whatever. Uh, if for GitHub, I f think we have some configuration setting where you can configure access tokens, so you can use that for fetching private repos. So yeah, uh, so this is a use case that, that we're aware of, be because actually, so, uh, so Target, the customer that funded this, of course they have all these internal repos, so uh, uh, yeah, so that, that's something that needs to work. Okay, cool. Hi, how can we try this out? Um, so there is a Nix Flakes uh, attribute in Nix packages. Uh, so you can set, uh, in Nix West you can set uh, config.nix.package to Nix Flakes. Uh, and then you get a Nix Flakes enabled system. Or you can, yeah, or you can do uh, Nix, Nix run Nix Flakes. From Nix packages, uh, the caveat that the one on release 1909 is currently sort of broken, because a few days ago uh, <laughs> uh, GitHub changed their well uh, the e tags that they're serving for their archives. So, so I, I was abusing the fact that their e tags were actually Git revisions, and I had no reason to actually assume that that would always be the case, and that stopped being the case a few days ago. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, uh, so I fixed that, but that's not on on on, uh, on release 1909 yet. But uh, so I'll have to backport that. But yeah. Uh, we have some uh, necessary impurities like the current system. How are you handling this? Like ARH64 or x 64 It's an impurity, but it's uh, like a requirement to work. Um, how are you handling it with? Uh, as a reproducible manner. I didn't actually see the question. Oh, the, oh yeah. Uh, I, I think the question was about uh, multi-platform support, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I hoped you wouldn't ask that. Um, <laughs> um, so um, uh, until last week or so, it didn't actually have multi-platform support. So the, the, the problem here is that um, you need to somehow pass in the uh, system argument well, you need to. Um, uh, okay, so flakes want to be completely reproducible, and if you, if you pass in something like a system argument to, as a function argument to the flake, then it would, uh, well, it, it would be sort of reproducible, but it would no longer be enumerable. So you wouldn't be able to ask a flake what its contents are anymore, um, and. Uh, and, and also passing in function arguments would open the door to all sorts of configuration. Uh, and then before you know it, you need a readme.md again to figure out how to build it. So, uh, so I might still do that in the future. So maybe this is the most practical way to just have a system function argument there. Uh, but for now, what I've done is, um, um, so the Nix command will just evaluate packages dot current system. So uh, so it's up to the flake to decide which platforms it supports. So this particular flake, uh, so it, it doesn't actually look like, like this in, in, in the real world. Uh, it's uh, written a, a bit more general. So it, it, it emits attributes for every platform that it uh, supports. Um, so that that is a little bit more verbose. It adds a line of code per, per output, but uh, it's not too bad. Uh, so it's the responsibility of the flake to actually say what it supports. Um, now you could say that's a little bit nasty because it means you cannot build the flake on platforms that the flake offer it didn't choose to support. Uh, but sort of in the flake philosophy, the solution to that would always be to um, create 
another flake that pulls in the original flake and, for instance, uh, uses its overlay to, uh, uh, to instantiate that package for whatever architecture or maybe even cross-compiled architecture uh, you're, you're interested in. Uh, so the, the, the package's output here is, is only something uh, for uh, the Nix CLI and things like overlays or modules would work on any platform or, well, I mean, they would evaluate on a platform. Whether they work is another question, but, uh, um, yeah. So, uh, but, but, yeah, so thi this is still a bit where we have to experiment about what the best approach is. So we only have time for one more question, and I think it was... Uh, hi. Uh, thanks for the talk. It was a feature we were all waiting for. Uh, the question I have, um, when you were talking about Hydra and when you have the reproducible builds where you can click and you get the command. Um, uh, yeah, so the question is, what if you have, so this um, Nix homepage uh, depends on multiple other um, flakes and when you specify the, the build, uh, this doesn't pin the other flakes, which are not kind of under your control. Isn't that not reproducible then? So the lock file... To kind of lock file recursively for all the flakes that you also depend on. Well, so it's actually not done recursively. The top level flake.lock file uh, locks all the, had all the dependencies, also the transitive dependencies. So, so it would look at the flake.lock file of the Nixers homepage see. repository and that locks everything. So not just the top level thing, but also the, the transitive ones. Uh, so you have to have flake lock uh, yes, file exactly. always. Exactly. So what that doesn't do is if you want Hydra to be testing, well, uh, to do an actual integration test, so to build Nixos homepage against the latest version of those dependencies, you currently cannot do that because it would require Hydra to update the flake.lock file, which in itself wouldn't be the problem, but then it's... Uh, would have to register that flake.lock file somewhere to make it reproducible by user. So it would have to store it in the database or... Uh, uh, so, I mean, that's, that's not an unsolvable problem, obviously, but uh, uh, I haven't done that yet. Yeah. All right, thank you. <laughs>